Let's talk about Muriel and uh, growing up, getting involved in uh, your uh, World War II experiences. So, good morning, Muriel. Good morning, Jim. Okay, let's get started and tell me a little bit about growing up in, uh, in New York, right? Well, I grew up in a very small town, but it was only 12 miles north of the George Washington Bridge. So, Manhattan was our city. Uh, we had a population of about uh, 700 people at the time. It was Palisades, New York, the little area called Sneedon's Landing, which was where I lived. Um, I lived it with my mother, who was a widow. Uh, my father had served in World War I, and after his death in 1930, my mother received a monthly $8 government check as the unremarried widow of Carl Johnson. This was my spending money when I was in college. Okay. My mother had taken over my father's business and uh, also it was during the depression um, she took in a school teacher to board with us. There was a little, I attended a little two-room school and uh, four grades in each room and uh, one of the teachers lived with us so I had to behave all the time. Yeah. I, there was seven in my eighth grade graduation class and then I went to Tappan Zee High School in Piermont, New York which is no longer there. I had a great time in high school and that's where I met my husband-to-be. I then uh, went on to college at Bucknell University in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and um, I was there on December 7th. Uh, I had been rehearsing for the Messiah, which we were going to sing for a Christmas program, and as we came out of the rehearsal hall, hall the um, campus was in, in an uproar and in an unbelievable a state of disbelief, I must say. Mm -hmm. And we heard what had happened at Pearl Harbor. Things changed immediately sure. in college. They had uh, military programs that were set up. Uh, the boys started training, some of them right away, some of them enlisted right away. Now, were you and Charlie married at this no, time? No, okay. we were not married. Uh, no, in fact, uh, we, we waited to get married till I got it and was educated because my mother, being a single working woman, said, you have to be able to support yourself. You never know what life is going to bring. But in any event, my roommate came back that Christmas married. And married students could not stay on campus. So she had to leave. And I decided I was going to leave too. And I went home to my mother's home and continued my education in Manhattan. In 1943, Charlie and I were married. Okay. He was doing defense work and uh, had a deferment for six months. So we lived with my mother and uh, he decided after six months he could no longer ride the subway in New York. People were looking at him and wondering why he wasn't in the service. Yes. So he didn't ask for a deferment again. Okay. And uh, he was drafted and went into the uh, Army as a combat engineer. Uh, fortunately, um, during his training in Fort Belvoir, Virginia, um, he um, was uh, chosen for a very special unit that did photo mapping from aerial photographs. You had to be able to see in 3D. And he had, was then assigned to uh, Patton's 8th Army. However, I had been in Virginia with him while he was training, training. taking our young daughter. And uh, we stayed in a series of uh, uh, rooming houses and uh, finally I found a young couple that we got an apartment together and they had a child 
we had an infant at that time too. Okay. So uh, we both grew up very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, after he was, when he was uh, got his orders and knew he was going to be sent overseas, but we really didn't know where, I packed my child in the car and drove home from Virginia. I was merrily on my way and an officer stopped me for speeding. Okay. And I knew that uh, if I got a ticket, they'd take my gas ration stamps away because that was, the, that was the rule. I burst into tears and I said, my husband is going overseas and I'm trying to go home with my baby. And he looked at me sympathetically. He said, all right, you have a warning, just slow down. So I went home. How old are you now, Mary? I'm... 20 years. 30, 24, 23, 24, okay. something like that. Okay. And um, my mother owned a house in Nyack, New York, uh, that she had been renting, and I moved in there with my child and decided that I would rent a room because I was very close to Camp Shanks, New York, in uh, Orangeburg. And I knew that uh, there were, just as I had in, in Virginia, needed a place to stay, that there would be couples that needed a place to stay. And um, I, a young couple came. He was going to be permanently at Shanks because he had already served in the Pacific. And she was pregnant. So she decided she'd stay home and take care of my daughter. And I would look for a job. Okay. So that's, that's when I went over to Shanks. Uh, I was hired uh, to work in the Army Transportation Corps, uh, but I first had to complete, com uh, have a complete physical. I was pronounced fit for arduous work, and I was assigned to 28 train commanders. They were the officers in charge of the troop trains, and we had to arranged for all their trips and their routes. So uh, I got to know every rail line in the United States. Well, tell me a little bit about Camp Shanks before we go a bit here. Now, this is, uh, I, I, I don't think a lot of people know about it. Uh, it's certainly a, an incredible place. So yes. it, it, uh, well, it was a very large area and it took over a, a good part of uh, the um, area and the uh, people who were employed over there. Mm -hmm. It was a great place to find a job in those days. Um, the busiest day, I have some statistics, sure. saw 27,626 GIs dispatched to waiting trains in 19 hours, it took 37 trains with an average of 10 to 12 cars to handle the operation. They arrived day and night from all over the country. Uh, and uh, the troops stayed usually for a few days to a week and then were uh, moved to, to the New York City piers. And they referred to Camp Shanks as Last Stop USA. Yes, I saw that last, yes. Uh, there were also German and, and Italian prisoners of war there. Um, and uh, they did uh, maintenance work around the camp. And an interesting aside is a few years ago we were on a cruise, my husband and I, and we met a very nice couple. We became friendly with him. And he had been a German soldier he was 15 when he was captured in Europe, and he was sent to Camp Shanks, New York. Oh my gosh, York. what a small world, how wonderful. Yeah, oh, that must yeah. Have so that was, so that was interesting. Uh, we served uh, the young women over there, and then my friends, we served as hostesses at the local USO, yeah. and would have uh, dances and entertainment and so forth for the troops. I don't know whether you want me to tell you I, no, anything no, that's, more. That's what I want to hear about, what yeah. was going on. Yeah, so that was the, your entertainment. Tell me yeah. about that. 
Well, uh, it was just uh, there was uh, soft drinks and food and yeah. music and uh, I think maybe a pool table and some games and that kind of thing and. Uh, of course, we were very, uh, we were chaperoned. We didn't, couldn't leave with a soldier. Right, <laughs> you, right. you stayed there, yeah, yeah. So it was a lonely time too because I, uh, my husband was in France, and um, we corresponded daily. We used to number our letters so we'd know if one was missing, and that you know it had okay. to, it had to show up. So uh, a, that's know. how we kept in touch. It was long before the days of email and oh, cell phones, so. Absolutely, and that was so. those little, those little uh, uh, things that you did to the letters were, were very important, so yeah. you did know what yeah. sequence they came yeah. in, yes. Yeah. Um, I continued to rent a, a room in my home. The first couple stayed with me for quite a long time until he was discharged, actually, and uh, I continued to rent uh, two soldiers and their wives. I only had another couple that they knew. We all knew each other. And then a girlfriend of mine came and shared the house with me until my husband came home. Mm -hmm. So at, at Camp Shanks, tell me about a typical day for, for Muriel uh, Thompson. Well, I would drive over and uh, I, I can't remember the exact procedure in the office. But I remember we had a major who was in charge, and he would say, when there's nothing, no troop trains, you can read a book. But when the trains come in, I want to see everybody right busy right there. And that's more or less the way it was. Yeah. Uh, the commanders would come in and get their orders and which lines they were going in and which trains they were taking. And uh, that was primarily what we did. The um, soldiers in, in our department were primarily young men who, for one reason or another, could not go into combat. Uh, one, had, for instance, had false teeth, and you had to know how to take a, a, a hand yeah, grenade, yeah, 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 handle a hand grenade. So he was, you know, he oh worked in the I office. That's, that's and right. if they had eye problems or some yeah. slight physical problem, those were generally the guys we had in the office. And girls, we had a, we had a lot of fun. It was yeah. very, it was good. Well, it was, a, it was an important job. You, I would hope you have some fun along the way. It was a very important yes, job. Absolutely. I remember uh, <clears throat> exactly though, I was still there in 1946 when uh, troops were returning from Europe and then were being redeployed to Japan just before uh, that war had stopped and the one young man in our office had been taken out of his company before it was sent overseas for some physical problem and when his group came back and were redeployed they came through our office and there were five remaining members. He burst into tears. Oh my God, wow. I can't remember an awful, way, an awful lot more. Um, I was receiving a small pay, we didn't, weren't paid a lot, and eighty dollars a month that the government sent me because my husband didn't take any money. He just had it sent sent to me. Okay. okay. And <laughs> that was my allotment. Okay. Oh, and uh, enough to raise a, uh, your family. Uh, right? Enough to yeah. Yes. To get by. How about uh, friends and people that you met along the way at, uh, at Camp Shanks? Uh, you must have... Um, you now, know? you live on, on, on base, right? No, you, you no, I commuted. I yes, was probably okay. about 10 miles from okay. Nyack to Orangeburg, or less, 5 yeah. or 10 miles. And I did have a little Chevrolet coupe, and I drove. And we had had that car in Virginia. And we would taxi, on weekends, we would taxi soldiers to Union Station okay. who wanted to yeah. go home. Yeah. That was just another thing that, uh, that had happened. Um, but the, um, 
and then the, then the returning soldiers were coming in. Uh, yes. And then so they would come through. You would just do everything in reverse. And yes, and then either way. be sent to be um, a, a discharged, discharged or, yeah. or else to go on to some other duty. Yeah. So we were handling them too. Yeah, but I guess for yeah. the longest time they thought the troops were going to go continue on to Japan. To Japan, and, that's yeah, right. right. Uh, yeah. Now, where where were you, and how did you feel when the the war ended in Japan because of the atomic bomb? Tell me about that. How did you feel about that, and uh, did Harry Truman do the right thing? And, uh, I think uh, I think we were all elated that it was finally over sure. in Japan because I remember when my husband left, um, we had uh, he had two days from. Uh, where he was in camp in Rhode Island, and we met in Boston. You weren't supposed to do that, but we managed to meet in Boston, and I remember him leaving at 2 o'clock in the morning to go into the train station. It was snowing in February, and I thought, I don't know whether I'm ever going to see him again. You know, it was, it was one of the low spots in my life. So when the war ended in Japan, I was elated. I knew that it was so Charlie, over. Charlie came home. Passed through Rhode Island, you got to have a visit, but he was going to continue on. You thought to the Pacific? And no, no, he no, he went. He was only in Europe. Okay, okay. He was only in Europe. But from what? From I'm told, I went back to when he left originally. Oh, we, oh, I see what yeah, you're saying. Okay. Yeah, when we about. met, your, we your, just had a brief. Your farewell. Was, uh, and yeah. of course, that was against all the rules. But wow. someone got to me and told me where to meet him. And, that's wonderful. That's a great story. That's how it should be. But I can understand you. And the other thing we did in those days, I had a car, so any soldier that was hitchhiking, you picked him up. Yeah. And nothing ever happened. No, it was no, safe no, and wonderful. That's right. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So you felt how, what, what the, the atomic bomb did its thing, and then now tell me about how... how um, how that may have changed Camp Shanks, of course, you had these... The well, what happened after the war, um, the barracks were torn down and they built little houses uh, for returning uh, soldiers and their families. Mm -hmm. And it became quite a community, like uh, the one out on Long Island, I can't remember the name oh, of it. Oh, Levittown. Levittown, yes. kind of, but not, the houses weren't right. that grand. So a lot of the uh, boys started there. And they also, uh, a lot of them were connected with Columbia University. They either were, they went on the GI Bill mm -hmm. to Columbia, or uh, or they established residences there and started their families. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna move along here to uh, then your husband came Him home. Came home. And so. And we, I had the house, and my, our daughter was two years old, and uh, he, okay, he didn't, he didn't take. You got, uh, you were paid for a certain amount. I've forgotten. He could tell you. For you could, you didn't have to go to work right away. What, oh, when he I was discharged. Yeah. It, yeah, but anyway, he did. <laughs> Uh, we had a two-week vacation in Nantucket where Grandma kept uh, Christine, and we had a two-week vacation, oh, and then well, he went back yeah, to work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and it was interesting that at Camp Shanks, I, in the reading I, I did, that uh, they would march the troops from the four miles down down to the railroad yards and ferry them across to the troop ships. So it uh, it must have been going on all day long around the clock. It was. It massive, was. Uh, yeah. massive men, humanity. It's, uh, uh, so the Hudson River must have been pretty busy there. Uh, yes, it was. At that yeah. time. Yes. My husband came home in a victory ship. And later on, that was the graveyard of victory ships up in the uh, Hudson River near uh, Avistro. And for years, you could see hundreds of ships just I, anchored there. I've seen pictures of that yes. on the Hudson, the victory ship and the liberty ship. Yes. They're edge to edge, and it, uh, oh my, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But 
Yeah, I, I don't. I think my dad came home on the Queen Mary, so he may have been one of those. Uh, 14 All right, years. Charlie came home on it. Was called the Aiken Victory. It was a victory ship. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So that's. So and I met him down at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. That's where he came in. Okay. And uh, they were uh, came off the ship alphabetically. So it took over an hour to get to the T's, yes. and when he did finally get off, I had a quick hug and kiss, and he was shipped off to Camp Kilmer before he was discharged. Oh my God, where was that now? Where's Camp Kilmer? <laughs> that was in New Jersey. Okay. That's very interesting. I never heard that before, that they were, you came off the ship in alphabetical order. Now, I guess it <laughs> has to be some system, and that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. oh my goodness, that's, that's interesting. Uh, well, that's so. How do you feel about what you did for your country and and um, the, the the friends you made and the, the whole experience? Well, I'm sure it was. I was very uh, happy. I was able to do something. It kept me busy, and and it was uh, interesting work, and it was a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had friends that got together and friends of the people who boarded with me and uh, it was a good, it was yeah. not a not too bad a time. It was sad in the way that every once in a while there'd be someone on the list that I, a missing soldier that I'd been to school with and families that I knew who lost uh, sons in the war and that was how would you get that information? Would you um, was that you didn't public? get it right away? Yeah, no, it was probably was yeah. It usually was listed in the newspaper, the newspaper. every day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I, I did a little looking into the New York Times, and I see that the Camp Shanks had a baseball team. Um, yes. And um, well, they had a, a a real it's its own community. Yeah, it had it was a large community yes. in itself of people who didn't move who had to right. be there for whatever reasons. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it talked about uh, now the uh, it talked about prisoners escaping from there. Were you aware? I of that? no. No. Okay. I, no, I never was. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there were. Yeah, there's a little bit of that in the New York Times. I just wondered if because that was something. They, they, were, they roamed pretty freely over the area yeah. doing yard work and washing windows and that kind of thing. Yeah, this is Cleaning the, places up. I don't think they got very far, but uh, yeah. they still, had, if they had an opportunity, they, they would, uh, they had escaped, but... Uh, Not too many of them could speak English. Yeah. It's amazing that they brought all those prisoners back here to the United States, but I guess that's, uh, that had to be done. They had yeah. to deal with them, you know, that was uh, part of it. Um, well, this is, uh, so now, Charlie's home. Tell me about uh, your children and where you settled and uh, did you keep did you keep in contact with any of your uh, your friends and uh, the folks that you met during your time at? Uh... No, not really with anyone that I knew over at Shanks. I didn't no. keep in touch with them because I had my own friends in the community where I had grown up. I lived, yeah. You yeah. Know? And uh, a lot of us were Army or Navy wives, mm -hmm. and we would get together and see each other. So where did you and guys then, settle after uh, Charlie came? Well, out? we stayed in the house that uh, that my mother owned in Nyack, mm -hmm. and uh, then we built a house. My mother had some property adjacent to her house where I had been brought up, and she gave us a piece of property and we built a house, and we lived there for about seven or eight years when. Um, Charlie uh, was asked to join uh, United Aircraft, or Pratt & Whitney, in Hartford, and that's when we came to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. 
And your son, Carl, was born? Our son was born in Nyack. And uh, 11 years later, our youngest child was born in Palisades, when we were okay. in our, the home that we built. Okay. Now, it's, uh, uh, a pleasure to, uh, to interview you for the Veterans History Project. It's, um, so many different, uh, things were done during the war. So many, I mean, it's, so, it was, it's so, been so interesting for me to learn about a place called Camp Shanks and yeah. that, uh, you know, these fellows had to get overseas somehow. There's lots of paperwork, there's lots of coordination and manpower involved yes. in moving that. Yes. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very interesting that uh, that was going on right there on the... On sometimes the they went to their port of embarkation by train and sometimes they went, there was a pier in Piermont, New York, and the ships would come right up there to transport them down to the ocean liners in Manhattan and they'd leave that way. Yeah, there's a, a, I, I think, is it Weehawken, or I don't know, there was a, a picture of the troop ships right across the Hudson River, yeah, and they would, yeah, they would come down yeah. from Cam Shanks and be taken across, and uh, get, uh, get on the troop ships uh, and yeah, leave, yeah. yeah. must have been, it yeah. must have gone on around the it clock was, at a time. It, it was, was constant. Both going and, and coming back. Yes. Uh, so. So how do you feel about your experience? You, uh, I guess, uh, you did your job. You feel. I felt I felt good, and I and for both of us, it was a, my husband and I. His experience, which fortunately didn't involve combat at all, uh, which was very fortunate for him, and uh, my experience of managing a home and working and we both grew up yeah we were ready to assume our places and go on and with our lives that's wonderful that's wonderful uh, well have we got many more to what else would you like to tell me about your your experience something Oh, I, Maybe I can't think of something anything. special, something memorable. Uh. Well, I was very fortunate in, in the, the relationship I had with my mother and my husband's family who lived nearby. So I had a lot of support, yeah. which was very helpful. And I enjoyed his sisters and uh, would be get together with them and it was very nice. I like the part about you talking about, you know, if a soldier was hitchhiking, you helped him out, if the soldier needed a ride because you had a car, yeah. uh, it was, uh, yeah. you know, everyone that's helped. how people did things. That's how people war. did right, things, right. yes. And that, yeah. We may never experience that again, but it, uh, mm -hmm. it was a grand mm -hmm. time. Uh, a special time with special people uh, doing special things. Yes. And, uh, yes. You know, some, some very sad things, but for the most part, it was a job that needed to be done. And there's so many aspects of, of what happened in those four yeah. years. So, yes. so, well, then we'll say thank you. You're welcome. Muriel Thompson, uh, I want to thank you. The Central Connecticut State University thanks you. The Library of Congress thanks you for your your uh, wonderful description of your war years and uh, at Camp Shanks, which is something we were all learning about. Uh, and it was uh, so nice to interview you. And uh, I thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Okay. Thank you.